Oh, I didn't see you there. Sorry, I was just in the middle of failing to keep the consistency of the content on this channel. We're gonna be doing something different today, and for starters, this avatar is definitely not appropriate for the video I'm gonna be making. Trust me, this will make a lot of sense right about... <laughs> now. If you somehow haven't caught on or have been blissfully unaware of the content on this channel, I really like Problem Sleuth. Speaking of which, happy 413 everyone! Today marks Homesuck's 15th anniversary. Oh, that must be the video's analytics after people heard this was a Homesuck video. It was 15 years ago on this very day when a boy was first given his name, which after a series of nonsensical events would spiral into the massive 8,130 page story that we call Homestuck today. With a lineage this long that spanned its creator's rise and downfall, reshaping of internet culture, and one too many horror stories involving body paint, it is truly a reminder to those who started reading all those years ago that the inevitable marching clock of time will continue to slowly march on, and their youth will slowly continue to slip away, tantalizing from their aching, wrinkly grasps. If you're that person, please keep watching because I've scared my primary audience away. It was hard for me to decide what I really wanted to do with this video. I mean, sure, it had to relate to Homestuck, but I didn't exactly just want to rehash an old Reddit post or make a shit post about how ICP and Guy Fieri would take over the government. I really wanted to make something special for the occasion, and what better way than to talk about the story itself. There's a subplot that's lingered in my mind well after the literal thousands of pages I flipped through. It stuck out to me more than the animations, or the games, or even the epilogues, uh, which... And it's this moment right here, all the way back in Act 5, Act 2, about 3,874 pages in, right as Doc Scratch is in the middle of his shenanigans. Not yet, whoops, sorry for popping in. I know, who would've thunk it? What's a Fikes video without a wacky transition? Just warning you guys of potential spoilers for the entirety of Homestuck's story, the epilogues, and Homestuck 2 itself. So if you don't want to be spoiled, who am I kidding? It's Homestuck. You either read the entire thing or never planned to. This doesn't matter. This segment doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm, gonna, go, I'm gonna go play more Dark Souls 3. I'm gonna play more. As opposed to the usual style of Homestuck's unusual storytelling, Hussy, or I guess Doc Scratch since Hussy hasn't attacked him yet, Doc gives us the opportunity as the reader to choose exactly whose story we'd like to follow to progress. Using these photograph clippings, we can follow the story of whoever character we choose. So out of all these wonderful stories, which do you think we'll focus on? That's right. The one with John Egbert, baby! Dude, I love John. John is such a sweet, innocent kid. He's like that one friend you make in school that shows you how to play the Pokemon card game and plays Minecraft on the Xbox with you. By far, he's had the most normal upbringing out of any character in the story, and it shows from his innocent demeanor and willingness to be there for his closest friends. I am John's number one fan. No contest, and if you fight me on this, 1v1 me PC, no spell casting, main academy gate, my password is John Lover 42 bring it the fuck on so when someone like Vriska is brought into the picture arguably the most omega bitch in the entire series a character infamous for bear with me turning her friend Tavros into a fucking paraplegic blinding her best friend Terezi mind controlling and condemning literally thousands of trolls to be eaten by her spider mom mind controlled her friend Solix to fucking murder her other friend Aradia are we noticing a pattern here continuously bullied and tortured said friend she crippled sorry i mean the other friend she continuously tortured and crippled also she's a protector bitch. I'm sorry, should I go on? You actually get some compelling interactions? Huh? Ones that, in my opinion, have some of the most complex interactions in the story between just these two characters. I'm not saying it beats out Dave and Dirk's history or, god forbid, 
Dave Cat. It's just to me, these characters' interactions in this part of the story have spoken out to me the most out of any interaction in the entire story. And to explain why, we're gonna need some context. Oh, whoops, uh, data mosh machine broke, sorry that I couldn't get a better transition. I won't delve too deep for you and my sake, so the very earliest point I think we can analyze is right here, page 3297. Megalovania. Shut the fuck up, we are not doing this. Aradia does some cool bullshit, arguably more than what Vriska does in this flash, but let's be real. Do we really associate Aradia with Megalovania and Homestuck? No, because Vriska stabs Tavros for no good reason and fucking kills him. Tavros is relevant to this discussion in a lot of ways because he shares a lot of the same characteristics as John. They're both clueless, sweet, pathetic little guys with the exception that Vriska really fucks over Tavros. She sexually assaults him. And mind controls him to reciprocate her red feelings, which, shocker, is pretty fucked up. Somehow I feel no one needs to be reminded of this. This is all done in the context she's trying to toughen up Tavros and her fucked up Alternian machinations. So you'd expect Vriska's treatment towards John, the meek, nerdy kid that loves shitty movies and grew up in a proper home to be just as bad, but... For some reason, she actually starts respecting him, and opens up to him, but not exactly in the best way. She opens up to him about murdering Tavros. Hi, John. Oh, hey there, Vriska. Can this wait? I was about to check out this castle and see if my dad is here. Your guardians are not here. Oh, dang it. Do you know where they are? Yes, they are in another castle. Don't worry, you'll find them later. Ugh, how much later? In a while. Ma'am, settle down. I am telling you that you will find them after a little more questing around in your awesome blue godhood. So why don't you relax and talk to me for a while? Well... Okay, I guess. Why don't you have your hood up, by the way? Shrug? You look great with the hood up. And anyway, we should be showing a little pride as the only ones to make God tier, don't you think? Psh! I don't know if it's much of a major accomplishment, honestly. John, are you mad at me? Um, no? Then what's the matter? I guess I just missed my dad. I was hoping he would be here, but apparently I won't see him for another few hours or whatever. If that's what you see in the future, then I guess there's no fighting it. Ugh, blah. I still find it a little hard to understand the sentimentality you attach to these adult humans. It just seems so strange to me. But hey, that's alien culture for you. Yeah, I know. I guess you just have to think of them the way you think of your loosest sis? Lucy? Yeah, sort of. Except I never liked mine that much. Even after I prototyped her, things were pretty chilly between us. I spent most of my adventure avoiding her. <laughs> that is too bad. John, are you sure you're not mad at me? No, why would I be mad at you, Vriska? Because I tricked you into getting killed! Oh, right. I actually almost forgot about that. Would it help if I said I was sorry? Why would you need to apologize, though? I mean, I admit I was pretty confused about it at first, seeing my dead body in the cloud and all, but in the end, you did it to help me, didn't you? Really, I should be thanking you. Uh, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Sorry, I wasn't sure what to say for a moment. I'm just so incredibly relieved you're not angry with me. <laughs> I really don't know what reason I would have to be angry. I mean, aside from the deception involved, but... I kind of understand why you did that, and in any case, you did give me a choice. Yes, I did. I don't know, John. You'd be surprised how often people resent it when you try to help them. But see, you really get it. That's why you're special. Shrug. <laughs> so, is that what you want to talk to me about? Yes. Well, not exactly. Then, what is it? I know how this is probably going to sound, especially to a human, but I just killed someone. You did? Wh who was it? You mean, like, a bad guy? Not exactly. Oh yeah, Carcat mentioned that he was in trouble. 
and then he had to go. It made me a little worried. Are you guys under attack or something? I'm not sure what his deal is. I haven't seen him in a while. But we are not under attack. Not yet, at least. Oh, well then, who did you kill? He was a friend. Someone from our team. Why? It's a little complicated. Well, did he attack you or something? Yes, but really, that's not why I killed him. He was no match for me, and I could have just incapacitated him or flown away or whatever. The truth is, I killed him because at the time, I thought I wanted to. And sort of felt like I finally had to. Uh, why did you have to? Because enough was enough! You don't even know how frustrating it was to be friends with him! I used to really like him and always wanted to help him get stronger so that he might stand a fucking chance to actually make it on our world. But he was just so weak and indecisive. He wouldn't change. And when he tried to change, it was too little and too late. Always late. Lady, lady, late. Too late to kiss me, too late to kill me. He couldn't do it when I really needed him to. So when I saw he was actually serious about trying to kill me now of all times, I just got so angry. I'm still a bit upset thinking about it, so I killed him. And I'm pretty sure he's dead for good now. Wow. You're right, Vriska, that doesn't sound good. I know. I know our races are completely different. And I really hate the idea of you thinking worse of me because of this. But I don't have anyone else to talk to about it. You don't? What about all your friends? I bet Carcat would listen. Or, or what about Terezi? She's pretty nice, isn't she? No, 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 no. I mean, yeah, they're fine, but I can't talk to them. Why not? For one thing, they would probably just be pissed off at me for killing Tavros. And more importantly, there's no way I could tell them how I really feel about it. Well... How do you feel? Horrible! If any of my friends knew that, they would think I'm weak. Oh, I guess I understand. I mean, I'm trying to with the cultural difference and all. Do you? Like, trolls are more violent and angry, right? Kind of like Klingons or something, which is an angry race of alien savages from a human TV show. We aren't savages, you dope. Oh, I know, that's not what I meant. But I'm guessing you'll have to act tough to make it in your world and have a sense of honor about fighting. And like to beat people up and stuff, right? Uh, yeah. Let's say close enough. But I think no matter what alien culture you're from, killing is still wrong, and it sounds like you do too. Yeah, see, this is where our cultures clash, I think. I guess I have to admit, I don't actually know that much about humans either. Other than that you're all pretty soft and mild-mannered and seem to be friendlier and think killing totally sucks. I really have no clue what it means to grow up as a human, though. But I do know what it means to grow up as a troll, and what's expected of us. What does it mean? When a troll comes of age, you better believe it means they're going to start killing. It's what we do as a race. We are very effective conquerors, and as such, we practically dominate our galaxy. Or... used to. The ones that don't learn to be ruthless? They're better off dead. And the reality is, it won't be long until they are. That's just life for us. That sounds terrible. I would like to be culturally sensitive, but I wish it didn't have to be like that for you. I've started to really like you guys. Well, thanks, John. That's nice of you to say. But let's face it, it doesn't fucking matter anymore since our whole race was wiped out. Maybe for the best when you think about it. Hmm. But at least Paradox Space gave us some purpose before wiping us out, right? At least we got the chance to create you guys, and all those twinkly stars you used to look up at. Yeah, that's true. So be I think it's easy to forget that these are still kids. But, uh, none of this changes how fucked in the head Vriska is, which I'm sure is especially because of her not-so-nice upbringing. But Vriska opening up is out of character, especially for someone so hardened and appearing strong to be this reliant on some human kid's approval. Blatantly disregarding how this conversation is about the kid she fucking brutally murdered a couple minutes ago, and also crippled. 
And also, this is the most vulnerable she's presented herself after hundreds of pages. And to all people, John. The fact she still points out John's easy life, something she especially gives out to Tavros about, and gives John the benefit of the doubt along with actually acknowledging her feelings for once, it's a step in the right direction. I mean, it's not much, but at the very least, John and Vriska do have fun talking to each other, and it's the most normal moment she's had to just be a kid. It's likely John is treated more warmly because John actually succeeded in reaching God tier, which makes him the third person, other than Vriska, to make God tier at that point of the story. By the way, they don't actually know that a radio made God tier at that point. They both, in one way or another, have gotten shit done. In a way, this commonality is what sparks some sense of a bond between them as chatting buddies for the time. Good. I think it's time for me to get going too. I will prepare for battle. Ah, oh, man. I guess there's nothing I can say to change your mind, and it's something you really have to do that I understand, but how about this? What? Can this not be the last time we talk before you go? It would be nice to hear from you at least once before you leave to fight him. Yeah, you got it. I will message you before I leave. In my future, too. None of this messaging me in the past nonsense before I even knew you. Of course. Okay, great. I'll hold you to that, Vriska. It will be a certainty. That said, there's no need for any sort of farewell right now. Go do your amazing windy thing, John. Be creative. I will talk to you later. Okay, I will. Later. This would be the last conversation John and Vriska would have with each other. These conversations, by the way, happen in the span of just a dozen pages spread across other story arcs. But before she leaves, she sends John a couple more messages as a sort of bidding farewell between the two of them, because like a calm breeze before an incoming storm, she'd find herself fighting Jack Noir, her friends at his feet, dead, before she could stop him. John! You're heading into the blackout, so I won't be able to see you until you leave. But don't worry, I can still sense you're there. Because of awesome powers, remember? Smooth move ditching your computer like that, by the way. That was some incredible leadership you showed. Now I have to contact you through Rose, thus exposing me to the risk of actually having to talk to her. Your carelessness has put the Heroes of Light in a very awkward position, John. I hope you're satisfied. <laughs> Just kidding. She's obviously a little too preoccupied at the moment to be sassing me. Just borrow her computer and talk to me when you get the chance, okay? I will be waiting. Still dead, huh? Or are you too busy weeping over her corpse to pick up that headset and answer me? You can't fool me, John. I know you are not staying dead for long. Nothing too glorious about the way you just died, I bet. Let me guess, even after all my lessons, you allowed yourself to get sucker-stabbed, right? Pretty lame. I mean, lucky for you it was lame. I guess being lame pays off when dying a hero's what gets you killed. If our Hero of Breath reached God Deer, he would have been completely indestructible, lol. Damn, I forgot, I was going to stop ripping on that guy since he got stabbed through the chest and died. <laughs> whoops. I don't know for sure, but I'm betting that if I go to fight Jack, it'll wipe out all the bad things I've done. I think if I die, it'll be a hero's death, so it ought to stick. Pretty good motivation to win the fight, though, don't you think? One way or another, I think this will be my last big challenge as a gamer. As such, I would like to pass my dice on to you. It is very important to me that they stay in good hands, John, that you continue their legacy and that of my ancestor. Eight to the eighth. Use the code. I'm sure I can count on you to make something awesome with it. I guess I was assuming you'd be talking back by now, so now I'm just talking and talking and spinning my wheel device like an idiot. Maybe I don't actually know how I wanted it to go. I guess I could just shut up and skip ahead on your timeline a little, talk to you when you're alive. That would make sense. So I guess I will do that. 
But then, maybe if I did, I wouldn't actually say what I wanted to say, so I will just say it. To be honest, I am nervous about this fight. But I'm still going through with it for a lot of reasons. To save my friends, or at least the ones who are still alive. Oh, and I guess to save reality itself from being totally fucked up, there's that too. But I think what's motivating me to win this fight the most is the possibility of getting to meet you when it's all over. Maybe I can finally put all this terrible stuff behind me, and I won't have to worry about being the best anymore or proving what a ruthless killer I can be. Maybe I can try out whatever is supposed to be normal for a human. Who knows, it might not be as boring as it sounds. Maybe, if you're not too freaked out by all the bad things I've done, or the fact that I'm an alien, we could go on a date? Don't worry, it could be a human date, whatever that entails. No weird alien stuff, I promise, and no killing or murders, or even talking about killing or murders and such. Just whatever you like to talk about and think is cool. I could even be persuaded to watch more of your absurd human films. Do you like any others which feature that rugged human with the long hair and wounded arm? You know the one, the sweaty guy with the mutilated animal and the speech impediment. Those would be tolerable to watch, I bet. Well, think it over. Before I go, I'll get in touch one more time later on when you're alive and maybe have something to say about it. Oh yeah, sorry about your adult male guardian. I wasn't trying to be deceptive by not telling you. I decided not to because I didn't want to be the one to make you sad about it. Was that selfish of me? I don't know. You would have found out regardless, like we all did. There are things we care about that we just have to leave behind. It just sucks for those who aren't in as much a hurry to leave it all behind as me. Wait, someone's coming. Hang on. Oh, God. She's wearing her RP outfit. What the hell is she up to? Man, she's got her dumb dragon doll and everything. Guess she means business this time. Damn it, I've got to go deal with this now. Anyway, if you actually get around to reading any of this, thanks for listening, John. If my outrageously great luck has any say in the matter, we will be meeting up in no time. Just please consider what I said. Okay, later. <laughs> So I lied. She dies. She, she's dead. Vriska gets stabbed in the back by her closest friend and dies before she ever has the chance to talk to John again. This is how we return to here, back in Doc Scratch's office and back to the clippings. If you uh, haven't caught on, this is not only a story about John, but about Vriska to whoever's dismay. As if we, the reader, flip back to the start of a book's chapter, we're back in John's house long before any mention of the game Spurb. Vriska in her home too, but something's off. Hi, John Human. Ah, uh, excuse me, alien time troll, but I'm trying to wrap a present. Really, you all have the worst timing. Yes, I can see that. Two ugly garments and seeds for some kind of strange earth vegetable. Pretty lame present, John. Nope, not going to ask how you even know my name. Or what I'm sending. Don't care. And one of these ugly garments is for me. Also, it's not ugly. It's awesome. Not as awesome as something you will be wearing later, thanks to me. Uh-oh. My mouse is hovering dangerously close to the block button. It always does that when I talk to trolls. It's the dangest thing. Calm down. I just thought I would foreshadow my existence to you with this quaint moment on your timeline. It is way too tempting not to let you know I have taken great care to become a very important feature of your life. Or for that matter, to let you know that I will be giving you a present so much better than the useless crap you're shoving in that box. I will be giving you the gift of immortality. Oh sweet, that's been our wish list ranking just below a mint condition Little Monsters poster, starring Hollywood superstar Howie Mandel. Can I expect it to arrive on my next birthday? Yes, as a matter of fact. Nice guess. It will come at a cost, though. 
The Mandel poster or immortality? The latter, jackass. In order for you to claim it, you will have to be quite gullible and allow me to arrange your murder. Ah, I see. Here's where all this sick trolling begins. You can keep your present, I'm not interested. But you will be! You will happily go along with everything I tell you to do. And then, once I have completely earned your trust, I will kill you, John. Ah! The other troll I just talked to was way better. If it's had grumpy, at least she was down with talking about cool movies, sort of. But this is all true. I've seen it already. You have no idea how delicious the dramatic irony is right now. You will die, I will lead you into a trap, and watch you bleed to death on a big stone slab with a sword stuck in your chest. There is nothing you can do about it. In fact, it has already happened. That's nice. Now scram, troll. I'll leave you alone soon enough. I was just feeling pretty pleased with myself about all the brilliant plans I made for you and your friends. Stopping by in your past to mess with your head is really just a courtesy, because I like to think we're pretty good friends by the time I get around to killing you. Okay, you got me. My feathers are all ruffled and can no longer tell my ass apart from a big orange earth vegetable. Now can you leave me alone? I guess so. But my inevitable grisly murder of you notwithstanding, you're a pretty fun guy to hassle. It'll be difficult sparing you from the privilege of my company until your game begins. This is basically the worst pickup line I have ever heard. Please, John, as if there is any conceivable sequence of events which could lead me to consider you as a viable romantic partner in any quadrant, even the pale ones. Blurp derp blow, what plausible alien sounding things. Weren't you leaving? Yes. Okay then. I mean, I was going to, but now I guess I'm not. Oh, why? Because this isn't really happening. It isn't? It did, once. But now it's just a memory. I guess I must be dead. <laughs> Okay, is this conversation over now? Can I keep packing my present? The conversation as it went before is already over. I said goodbye and you blocked me. Don't you remember? Well, I was going to block you, but then I didn't for some reason. Exactly, because we've already been through this. You're either asleep or dead like me. Man, I can't believe I let her trick me like that. Such an amateur mistake. I guess I'm feeling something like deja vu, maybe. I still don't think I believe you, though. Uh, hey, do you have any recollection at all of the last message I sent you before I died? I don't even know who you are! Yeah, I figured. Just as well, I made some pretty embarrassing confessions to you. I guess I'm getting what I asked for in a way, even though it's not what I pictured. What did you ask for? I asked you if you wanted to, you know, hang out. Was this after you killed me and gave me immortality? Yes. So, what do you say? Or what do you think you might have said? About what? You mean, hanging out? Yeah. Oh god, this is so ridiculous. You're just a crazy troll on the internet. And I need to get back to packing up this present for my friend. We are not going to hang out, I'm sorry. John, there is no present. You are not in your hive, and you don't have anything to send. She received it a long time ago. None of this matters anymore. If you don't believe me, you're free to look out your window. What will that accomplish? It might help you remember. And you will be able to see me, if you want. <laughs> Out of all the kids who ended up in these dream bubbles, John takes the longest to even realize he's in one. To contrast, Briska finds out literally in the first conversation they have together. Briska is the first to face the very real reality that she's dead and acts as John's sort of guide to helping him remember. Comparably to the rest of the entire story, I think this is her at her most honest. 
This is really the first time we see her not completely worried about someone else's strength or maintaining her own appearance of strength. Nothing really matters once it's game over, so why continue putting that barrier up? So, it seems that you are, in fact, an alien. With horns. And everything. Huh. Yes, John. Horns and all. That totally proves I am an alien beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now, what do you make of these blank white eyes of mine? What do you think that could mean, hmm? I don't know. Aliens usually have big spooky eyes, don't they? Humans have literally the dumbest extraterrestrial lore. Weren't those supposed to be aliens on one of your posters? <laughs> you mean Mac and me? Yeah, even I can admit that movie was indefensible. I can accept that you're an alien, but come on, meeting an alien who is also a ghost in my front yard is a bit much to believe. It's almost too awesome. So you don't remember anything about the game at all, then? The destruction of your planet? Bringing your ancestor back to life as a clown woman? Putting a huge, flaming ocean out with your magical wind? Jack Noir dying, resurrecting, and possibly dying again? Is any of this tickling your sponge? Hmm. Nope. Sounds cool, though. In his own John fashion, he's not even distracted at the fact Briska is right outside his house, or why the snow suddenly stops right at the end of his neighborhood, or the fact they start getting transported around to different planets inexplicably. These are my neighbors, who live in a lot of same looking houses as mine. I never see them, I think they're all really busy people with a lot of serious business to attend to. Hey look, the snow melted over here. It's really warm suddenly. Weird. Does your planet usually have these kind of temperature swings? Nah, this is pretty unusual December weather. I guess I'll take my coat off. I can take yours back if you want. No thanks. I think I'll keep it on. Instead, the first thing that comes to his mind is what alien technology is responsible for this, or if they're technically on a date. It's something akin to the game before your eyes. A game about a boy who, spoilers for the game, 3, 2, 1, fabricates the life that he lived in his own head to cope with the situation they were left in, yet it takes the effort of the wolf guiding him to open his eyes and see the tragedy that they shielded his own mind from. In the same way everyone else has needed guidance to earn their self-awareness, John needed guidance to fully wake in the dream bubble. But what makes Vriska and John's experience in the dream bubble different compared to everyone else is how personal the journey becomes. It's a castle! No shit. It is big and foreboding and ostentatious, just the way I wanted it. As a blue blood, I was entitled to build such a home, something to set me far apart from the commoners. You built it? Of course not. Robots built it for me when I was very young. But I was allowed to dictate instructions. Expected to, in fact. Oh gosh, so rad! Really? I still find it interesting what sort of mundane facts humans tend to be impressed by. Anyway, my design kind of got boring as I got older. A huge castle hive sounds great, but it starts feeling pretty cavernous and lonely after a while. There were so many blocks I never even used. Your tastes change, but you get stuck with growing up in a place suited to your earliest, most juvenile inclinations. Nobody tells you that when you're a kid, though. I think I know what you mean. I feel like a long time ago I might have given my dad the impression I really liked clowns, and now there are clowns everywhere His stupid collection just keeps growing and growing. It drives me crazy! John, that barely comparable example is so cute, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> This was my custodian. Uh... She was hurt in an accident. I killed her myself to put her out of her misery. Mm hmm. Holy shit, look at these glittering space riches. Yeah, I was really into treasure hunting for a while. What's with the broken eight balls? Never mind those. This was my respite block. From kind of an embarrassing memory, actually. <laughs> More eight balls? You're sure do you like to smash them? John, addiction is a powerful thing. You probably wouldn't understand. What are you wearing? Just a fairy dress. I wore it for this stupid thing I did once. Is that a rocket car stuck in the web over there? What's that about? Don't worry about it! Man, this would be such an awkward moment on a date. Again, if it was one. There's something really familiar about that rocket. 
let's keep going. They discuss their lives, their homes, they tell jokes and reminisce about their experiences. It's inherently silly. I had a couple chuckles at John's nerdiness because who wouldn't? His first reaction to an alien standing in front of his house was to give her a fucking coat. Fuck, I cannot believe how cold it is on this planet. How can any species possibly be able to survive somewhere like this? Yeah, I thought you looked pretty cold out here. So I brought you this jacket. And then... John starts remembering. What's happening? Are we back on Earth? You tell me. It's my house again. Why are we here? I was having fun seeing your planet. I don't know, John. They're your memories. This is my dad's room, but I've never been inside it, so why do I recognize it? Shrug. I think there were some birthday presents for me in here, but I can't recall what birthday that was. It was your 13th. But I'm still 12! Oh yeah! I remember this! There were imps all over my house, acting all rambunctious, but why? All so hazy. Where's my dad? Sounds like some things are coming back to you. Any chance you remember me yet? No, sorry. Hey, look! That's my dad! What's he doing here? I've missed the heck out of him, though I'm not sure why he should be safe at home right now. I guess I must have lost track of him, but I don't remember how. All I know is that I have this feeling like I should run over and give him a hug. Well, just so you know, he's probably not actually there. Kind of like how my Lucis was just a memory. Are you a psychic alien? Like the ones who Jodie Foster met in contact and assumed the form of her dead father to talk to her? As a matter of fact, yes, I am a psychic alien, but that has nothing to do with this. These are our memories, and we are in the afterlife. I keep trying to tell you, and it's starting to get frustrating. I see. So, it's not me who is Jodie Foster, it's more like you are Jodie because nobody believed her when she came home and had amazing tales to tell, except Matthew McConaughey. But it's okay, I will be your Matt McConaughey. Does that mean you'll believe me now? I guess I always did, sort of. I think I've been in denial about what's happening here. It's nice that you believe me, but that doesn't mean you remember yet. So if this isn't my dad, then where is he? He died too. You saw his body. Don't you at least remember that? No, not at all. I'm remembering a bunch of things, but not that. Then what? Do you remember me yet? No, I only remember when you contacted me and said you'd kill me a little earlier. But that was months ago. I do remember talking to some other trolls like you. I was playing this game, and it was on my 13th birthday, and I was really looking forward to playing it, but it was late in the mail. I got some presents for my dad, like this big weird clown doll that I didn't like much, and some fruit gushers. Oh, yeah, I also realized gushers made by Betty Crocker. That freaked me the fuck out. Did you realize Betty Crocker makes gushers? This comes as news to me. Well, she does. Her villainy knows no bounds. Oh, he also gave me this suit, which I remember wearing for a while, but didn't look quite like this. It had a black tie and no ghost, so I improved it. Actually, I remember dying in a suit. You do? But this was not the suit I was wearing when I died. This was... I was actually distraught the first time I read through this part, because this isn't even the same John we know. This is the John that listened to Terezi, the one she told to fight his denizen, the John she doomed to an early death. There's little to distract you from the reality that this is a dead kid not even realizing he's recounting his last memories before he died, a son wishing to embrace his father who's nothing more than a mirage, a distant memory too far to comfort him, and who will never experience that same embrace ever again. To me, John represents all of us who were 13 at some point. 
He would have never managed to survive 10 minutes in Spurb without his friends, and it's all the more depressing when this possibility is realized. Dave never ended up warning this John in time before he stepped into his denizen's chambers. I remember now. I was tricked by a troll into flying up to the last gate using this rocket pack. She said I could take a shortcut and go kill my denizen while he was sleeping. It didn't quite work out that way. This sounds like Terezi's handiwork. I don't know. She didn't tell me her name. She was a blind troll. She made me this incredibly shitty map for me to follow. Yep, that's her. I guess she got both of us then. Unbelievable. She tricked you too? Yes. Well, not tricked so much as made a pointless coin flip and stabbed me in the back. Wow, that's pretty cold-blooded. Oh, sure. She was easily the most underhanded and villainous member of our group. But I did let my guard down. And even when she stabbed me, I sure didn't think I was going to die. Why not? It turns out, immortality isn't all it's cracked up to be. Let's leave it at that. Huh. So I guess you never got to go around giving me immortality like you said, or killing me for that matter. Sounds like the blind troll beat you to it. No, I did, but... Ugh, this will be hard to explain to you. Explain what? <laughs> I guess in her own sick way, she actually set us up on this date together. Maybe I should thank her whenever she falls asleep. Or dies, god forbid. So, now it's a date? I don't know. I said it wouldn't be unless you remembered, and now you remember. But you still don't remember me, do you? Nope. Yeah, thought so. This version of you died before I started messing with you. Not that I expect you to understand what that means. I still can't believe I'm meeting a version of you that doesn't remember a thing about me. None of my great exploits or any of the ways I helped you. Only that one stupid time I taunted you. It's a vaguely frustrating feeling. Sorry, not sure what to tell you. So, you remember literally nothing I told you about myself? Not even the, uh, compromising stuff? Well, you did just show me around your planet, which is really cool. There's... compromising stuff? Your species would think so. But I guess it doesn't matter anymore. I guess not, but who says we can't get to know each other again? You wouldn't find that boring? No way! Not if you wouldn't. You said the name of the blind troll who killed us, but you have not told yours. I haven't? No. It's Vriska. I can't help but feel bad for Vriska as well. This isn't even the same John that remembers her. Sure, it's still the same nerdy John, but he's missing a couple steps from his own journey. This John even tries to rationalize himself getting killed by Terezi for the sake of her plan in the same way he did for Vriska causing John's death to achieve God tier. What's this? I found it very deep in the palace dungeon. I was wandering for hours following a horrible sound through the pipes. I guess Typhius was really close because it was very loud here. It could only be the sound of him sleeping. I was so tempted to play it, but I didn't dare risk waking him up. Pretty much by then, I was sweating bullets at the thought of confronting him. You were right to be nervous. Denizens are incredibly powerful monsters. You had no chance whatsoever at this stage of the game. You might have stood a chance after I started helping you, but Terezi really screwed you over by leading you here so early. Yeah. Guess if I ever see her, I should thank her, too. Why? Because this was important. What was? Getting killed by a monster? Well, yes, but not just that. The whole ruse was important. If I didn't make the decision to go, then Dave would not be able to go back in time and fix things. In fact, if I didn't die here in this place, we never would have been born in the first place. How could you know all that? This way. Yet, John still lets Vriska have a chance. I think it would have been interesting to see how this would have affected their dynamic. Maybe we could have seen how this reality would change him. If Hussey wrote anything more about this, because that's all we're given. This was the final photo clipping of this section. Now if you ask me, I think this ship is a sinking fucking mess and would have inevitably led to them breaking up anyway. John is a kid and Briska is a psychopath. Their personalities and ideals completely run perpendicular against each other, yet the fact it's such a mess makes this so compelling to me. There was a lot of storytelling potential that we could have gotten if we saw how their relationship carried itself out. I wish we could have seen how John would have handled a new partner and the conflicts that would have arisen because of how differently they were raised. I wish 
wish we could have had an opportunity for even a version of John to have more character development. John's character development in the entirety of Homestuck can be summed up into one word. Underwhelming. Sure, he's dealt with much of the same loss many of the characters in the series have dealt with, but a part of his overarching character in the epilogues is that he himself feels underdeveloped, as if pulling himself out of canon removed what consideration the game had in helping him grow as a capable adult. In the epilogues, he has a wife and a kid, but past using his retcon powers to personally make sure Lord English is dead and then banging Terezi in the back of his dad's car. I'm not kidding, this is what happens. He has this air of confusion following him. Even in Candy, he borderline obsesses over Terezi. He does nothing but think of her, even printing out and carrying a photo of her buried deep in his wallet. He's unsure and lost, and still feels like the same kid we first got introduced to nearly two decades ago. There was no heartwarming conversation before an intense battle or never-ending search for your best friend. John beat the bad guy. John won, and John got his new world to live in, however happy or unhappy it would have made him. The time he spent with Vriska might not have been entirely positive, but could have resulted in a version of John that's more capable than the one we have now. Except we'll never know. After John returns to the place where his denizen killed him and they both declare they're on a date, that's it. That's it. This is where the subplot ends. For the next two years, this is the last we'd ever hear from dead John and Vriska's story because uh, Hussey was too busy harassing a minor in his own story. Cascade happened between those two years. The Alpha Kids were introduced. Hussey fucking died in his own story before they got talking to each other again. John was stuck on the ship for two years while he got no updates on what happened to the both of them. John only gets the opportunity to see Vriska again when he falls asleep and wakes up in a dream bubble where, coincidentally, Vriska and Tavros are there. You know, the Vriska that he very somberly asked to message him one last time before she went off to fight Jack and never responded to him again. And get this, this is the only thing Vriska has to say about that version of John. Vriska, this is a very bizarre and unsettling fact to me. Why? Because, man, I don't know, it just is. You say we dated for a while, but like, I don't even get to remember doing that? I think that's mostly what's weird about it. Hey, we apparently don't get to remember the results of a lot of choices we didn't actually make. Again, see the breaks. Well, can you at least tell me what happened there? Like, how did that go? It was fine, for a while. It didn't really work out. Oh. We crossed paths every now and then after that. Things stayed pretty friendly between us, until he died. What? What do you mean he died? He was murdered. You mean... his ghost died? Yes. As in, he just doesn't exist at all anymore. Like, dead dead. Yes, dead dead. For good. I don't... how does that even... They dated, then it didn't work out. They crossed paths, and he fucking died. That's it. In the two years that has passed, this is the only information we're ever divulged in when it comes to that subplot. And I don't just mean years in Homestuck. I mean years in real life. It is never properly brought up again. Ghost John is just what his name suggests. Like a ghost, just poof. What, what John? Hussy never remembered him, so why should you? For all we know, Vriska fucking killed Ghost John the same way she killed Tabros. She committed the cardinal sin of breaking John Egbert's heart. You could imagine my confusion when I read through this the first time. After finally getting some mention of the John and Vriska we were introduced to, through thousands of pages of radio silence, and then, just as quickly, they stopped talking about him. Said confusion which turned to sadness, sadness that turned to anger, then to sadness again because the story's almost two decades old and there's nothing I can do about it. So, that's it. This is where the story of two of Homestuck's main characters end. With a big fuck you and a kick in the balls. So much potential. Wasted. There is nothing more to talk about. 
the main character of Homestuck, our first ever introduction in the story, and the main character of the story. The person who, solely because of John preventing her getting stabbed, would single-handedly guide their group and stop them from ever entering a Doom timeline. Because she's just that cool. But what if that wasn't the case? What if we turned the clock? What if we did it ourselves? I do not want to hear a single thing about how this, this isn't canon, this isn't canon, or the characters would never act this way. This is my shit show, and I get to pick the music. If you're ever tired of Andrew Motherfucker Hussey bullshit, I have your solution. Microsoft Paint fanadventures.com hate the epilogues because they're gross and weird boom home slice slice of life homestuck wish the conclusion to homestuck was better and didn't leave us on some cliffhangers of our favorite characters homestuck dact omega do you think dave sprite's development was kind of canned at the finish line crow strider au they got shit i didn't even know i wanted homestuck in spanish fuck it sure therapy stuck in this one i get to give therapy to my favorite characters Fef. Fe Feffery Preg. Oh my skibbity toilet! Are you giving birth? I just can't look! It's <laughs> <on me. laughs> we are kissing on divorce! <laughs> no, what the fuck is this? I like fan adventures because they don't turn potential characters that I like into complete fucking dicks for no reason. Case in point, this Vriska does not feel like the same person as this Vriska, who outright shames a version of her that found love and happiness. Don't ask me why there's two versions of Vriska. I think it has something to do with retcons and Vriska and Tavros getting prototyped, which, by the way, created a sprite that literally fucking killed itself because Vriska couldn't handle being Tavros for a minute, so she could convince her partner who, for some ungodly reason, decided she was bored and wanted to fuck off and die in a battle rather than hanging out with her partner of literal years at that point. I know, post-retcon Briska technically isn't the same person as dead Briska, but for fuck's sake, they both had their hearts to hearts with John before they died, and it's not like anything substantial happened for three years. Why is being happy suddenly so gross and inconvenient for her? So fuck it, ditch Andrew Hussey. You want a version of Briska that's likable, who isn't a complete total bitch, and actually gets to hang out with John like they said they would? Read Nightfall. TLDR, too lazy to... to, to re, re, re. Fuck. Briska finds herself at John's doorstep in a world where they beat the game. No middle-aged drama, weird cuckolding subplots, their kids in a new world, and John and Briska fucking hang out. Briska finally does the one thing that separates her from all her counterparts. She actually acts like a kid. I mean, sure, she's still a total bitch that doesn't understand why she's a bitch, but people actually call her out for being a bitch. It's great, and it's fun, and it makes me very happy to see them both finally get a chance to do what they promised. This comic's roots stretch as far as the now lost MSPA forums, and holy fuck is it a good read. And the best part is, I was gonna top this last section off by warning you all that it was unfinished, but the creator started renewing the comic after an indefinite hiatus, literally a month after I started this video. I had no clue about this prior to me starting the script. We are fucking winning! So please, I implore you. Go check it out and support its creator. Boom. Conclusion. Consider yourself educated on John X Vriska, aka Spider Breath. Video done. Fine. Sorry. Please look look at the timestamp. Come back. I have I have more content. I know this is technically the outro, but it's still 4:13, and a big part of 4:13 is not just the story. It's about the community. 
Also, I don't know how else to shoehorn this in, so here's a bunch of cool stories from MSPFA that I didn't mention, and I'm doing this solely because there's just a shit ton of good stories that I accidentally stumbled head-ass into. Just a little warning, MSPFA also almost got corrupted and lost all its data just like what happened to the original MSPA forums a millennia ago, so if some adventurers are missing their content, it's due to that. Anyway, let's go! Xenologia? Xenologia? I don't know, but it's the spiritual successor to Nightfall and written and illustrated by the author of Nightfall. It's definitely more of its own thing, so all I have to say is it starts off with a music number. Undertale Halloween Hack. You know all that music that I used for that one of aid video I made a little while ago? Yeah, it was all made for this webcomic. You hear that, regular viewers of my content? I tricked you! AGAIN! The music was also Homestuck! But yeah, it has some amazing music. This is where No More Nuzzles was supposed to be used too, by the way. Y you know, the track everyone thought Toby, holy shit, Fox made, but it was actually this person. So I hope it says a lot. Go visit their SoundCloud. They even have more tracks that were supposed to be used for the story. Vriska Snap. This adventure is completely broken, but from what I remember when I first read it and what's left of the adventure I could scrounge, the art is amazing, honestly. And so much better than the fucking wall of text that Hussy threw at us for Homestuck 2. Once again, Homestuck community does Homestuck better than Hussy, and I hope to god whoever still has the original images can potentially restore the comic to its original glory. Jade Harley has a dog penis and it's horrible, the webcomic. I know how it sounds, and I will leave it up to the actual readers of Homestuck to explain it. Good luck! This fan adventure is surprisingly high quality and funny. It pokes fun at all the stupid shit Hussy and the team who originally ran the epilogues in Homestuck 2 did, and they did a lot of dumb shit. Case in point, Jade's alleged Red Rocket. Highly recommend even though it's a short read. In the name of the Galactic Senate of the Republic, you're under arrest, Chancellor. Are you threatening me, Master Jedi? The Senate will decide your fate. I am the Senate. Not yet. It's treason, then. <laughs> Prequel Adventures Prequel is a story almost as old as Homestuck itself. It came out in 2011 and takes place in the world of Oblivion. It's probably one of the most famous examples of a story inspired by Homestuck along with using Homestuck's style. It's impressive even by today's standards. Fun fact, I had no idea what Homestuck was when I started reading the story. It's a fun piece of Homestuck's history and a really good story in its own. Definitely highly recommend giving this one a read. Problem Sleuth. Technically, this isn't MSPFA. I know, I know, but Problem Sleuth is so underrated. Please read it. I love it so much. Project S. Okay, again, technically, this isn't MSPFA, but this is possibly the most underrated Homestuck project, period. It's a full-scale animation project of Homestuck. They have one episode out right now, and it is fantastic. It's 11 minutes long, and I definitely recommend giving it a watch. Kanuki does Alternia. I like it because it's cool. And it looks cool. And the music is cool. Did I mention it has music? Everything about this comic screams edgy loser, I really like Pinkerton Edge, and it is fantastic for it. My only complaint is I wish there were more, because there were only a couple dozen pages put out as of making this. I mean, the art, the music, the impact font text that shakes around to emphasize spoken word or onomatopoeia. Yes, I did steal it for this video. Fucking sue me. Why is there not more? I want more. I Holy fuck, there's more?! Fuck.
fuck, this video was a doozy. Uh, as of right now, I'm wrapping up editing this video, so, uh, I kinda missed 413. Fuck, anyways, uh, fi final things. If you're wondering who drew me the new character sprites, uh, that'd be Teeth, my one and only, colon three. He, uh, doesn't really know anything about Homestuck, but he's fucking awesome for putting this together at such a short notice. I'll leave his commission info in the description in case you want to commission him. Go show him some love. Genuine big thanks to the voiceover Nexus for giving me permission to use their voiceovers of John and Briska. For those curious, those guys are working on dubbing all of Homestuck. Yeah, all. I really wanted to get my own little team of voice actors together for this video, but 413 was closing in and I was pretty much grazing by the date, even without putting together my own lines. These guys came in clutch for this video, and I'm incredibly thankful they gave me permission. Another big thanks to Valerie Gascal, the author of Kanuki Does Alternia. I read the original and the remake leading up to 413, and I fucking loved it. It is, it is 18 plus though, I have to say. I know I already gushed about it just a couple seconds ago, but I've been listening to everything goes on for practically two weeks straight. It really motivated me to get this video done because I really wanted to use it for the outro and I'm incredibly thankful they gave me permission to use their song. I had a lot of fun making this video, but Jesus Christ was it fucking painful. I began editing this around end of March and uh, suffice to say, editing a one hour video in just about two weeks is not fun. Still, I'm really happy to finally put out a video like this that wasn't, you know, ridden with controversy. <clears throat> Rao video. Mm. Also, just, I, I really love Homestuck, and I'm glad I finally get a chance to nerd round about it instead of, instead of putting vague references to it in my videos. I just need a long break now. Editing these giant fucking videos in the first couple months of the year is not fun, so, uh, bye. I'm, I'm gonna sleep now.